Howdy peeps Sam welcome back to the channel and today uh, we have a review and it is this the Edward MiG 21R Profi Pack Edition in 148 scale kit number 8238 and uh, did I do one recently? Well, you may be familiar with the weekend editions um, it's one I'm building for the build series as a weekend edition of the Spitfire. This being a profi pack, it means we do get photo etch, I think, and a few other marking schemes. So as you go up in the scales from weekend edition, profi pack, profi pack, whichever you want to call it, and then to the limited editions, you just get more extras in the box. You get the same plastic, but you just get either more etch, more schemes, then with the limited editions you'll get some resin and even more schemes. Anyway, I wasn't going to review this because, uh, well how to put it, a friend did a review on it and I didn't want to step on their toes. Um, but they've uh, since proven to not be who I thought they were, so Sodom. Anyway, so usual nice box art from Edward on the box size blah 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 we got the schemes but we'll see those when we go through the destructions later oh, the box lid off as usual my nice sturdy boxes from Edward move all the plastic into the box lid oh. well most of it and let's start off with a what have we got? We've got one, two, three, four, six sprues of grey, one sprue of clear, and two frets of etch, along with the decals. And Edward's usual three sealable bags, super noisy ones at that. We're going to go into the bin because I'll be starting this on Thursday. There's a buddy build going on on ISM. Uh, is Andreas's idea and we're all going to be building MiG-21s I think there's at least half a dozen of us if not more at the moment so first sprue we come to well which happens to be sprue A as a result uh, grab a pokey device pokey device that'll do try not to stab myself on it this time so we have the fuselage halves a couple of panels some other panels, one piece pylons and hanging off this end I think that's the top of the nose and air brakes now obviously Edward so nice cleanly moulded no flash blah 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 if I zoom you in a bit, a bit closer because we are quite a way out there we go Oh, get it roughly in the middle and we can see the really fine panel line detail super fine rivets and overall general nice surface finish there are some slight scuffs from where it's been in the bag down here but they'll soon polish out with a UMP buffer Cleaner ones in better states of repair are available. Um, and on the inside, as is, or on the back side, as I should say, um, not really any ejector pin marks in annoying, awkward places. <laughs> There's hardly any at all, actually, inside the fuselage halves. Bringing that one up as you can see, and then bring those parts over. So, all looking good so far. Now, what we do know of this kit is we know it's a good kit. Um, I've built one, uh, I think, probably most of the guys who are. I'm just moving sprues about at the moment, excuse me for a moment. Um, 
most of the guys who are building these have probably already built one already. Ooh, what should we go with next? Let's go with the uh, wing assemblies, shall we? Now I'm not. So I think this does qualify as a delta wing. I'm not entirely sure. So here we have the underside. Again, same super fine panel lines and rivet details. And if you compare these, uh, say just the, I don't know if they're even showing up, just how fine those details are compared to, say, an Airfix kit, you can you can see where the improvements are and why the kits cost more. But again, no noticeable flash or anything nasty. One piece control surfaces, the underside fin, horizontal stabs, stabilizers, sorry, I know some people get a bit upset when you use abbreviations for things, and the upper surfaces of the wings, again all looking nice and clean, uh, is that one a bit bent? Uh, no. no, it might be, there's just a slight scuff mark across there. I was wondering whether it got folded slightly in the box, but the other side has the same thing, so it's probably just scuffed on something. As I say, we know these kits go together well, and it's one of those ones where you don't need to buy any filler. And we've got a little in interest, little detail on the inside of the gear bays, and inside the top wings. So there's a little little there to show off. Oh, you can soon add to it. There might even be photo etch for it. Because the first one I built was the weekend edition. Next we have some of the smaller parts. I'll be trying to get these into the shop for you. So we've got a, what I believe is the intake fan. The back of the cockpit I believe. Oh, now I'm trying to remember what they were. I think they're the main gear bay doors or parts of. And he says pointing to something that's not actually in shot, it's just a mirror of that. And we have all sorts of smaller parts on here. The ring, I think that is at the front or the back. It's either the intake or exhaust, there's one of the rings for that. It's a uh, there is an engine in here, well, a front end and a back end, nothing in between. There's some more bulkheads with some nice fine detail on, little parts, and what I believe, oh, i say the other gear bay door, and I'm fairly sure that's the cockpit floor. Oh, got an itch. And again, the back side. Yeah, it's definitely the cockpit floor. <laughs> cockpit floor and front uh, wheel well, I would say. That's a, say that's the inside of the wheel well. Just because there's a tyre shaped gap in there. Um, but again, doesn't appear to be any annoying ejector pins. Yeah, except that one there is slightly raised and I'm guessing that's the mating service so it needs to be trimmed off. That's one of the cockpit side panels, yeah. Unless we're using the blank ones. We might be using the blank ones because of the photo etch, which you'll see later. The next sprue, what are we on now? Sprue something or other. D. I think I've actually maybe gone through these in order. Wow. So on this one we find, oh, straighten things up for you so you don't feel drunk. There we are. So we have the nose gear, the wheels, which are two part wheels with two part tyres. I'll show you the tyres in a moment. Nose tyre, wheel, various other random little parts, more random small parts, all nicely moulded. And we have the main gear legs, two part tyres, shock cone, which is nice and sharp and pointy at the end 
Here we have some more of the engine interior details. Oh, I'm getting caught up on things now. So, a couple of fans and a few more other parts. The exhaust nozzle. And uh, what else we got? Parts for the seat. Including a very nicely quilted backrest on the seat. Just down there. And more cockpit interior parts. And more just external sticky yoni parts. Sort of various uh, sensors, vanes, etc. And the uh, big long, uh, I'm not sure whether that would be a pito or a refueling probe or what. I think it's just an extra long pito tube or some such. And we won't really bother having a look too much at the back of that because, you know, it's not going to be a problem. And on to the second bag of sprues. We can find where to get into it. Oh, right, there's more sprues in here than I thought. There's actually quite a lot of plastic to this kit. Right, right, for a plane, anyway. Right, so we start with a little sprue. Which is basically the, I think the cockpit combings and the back of the cockpit, top of the, the front or centre part of the spine of the fuselage, and the vertical stable vertical stabiliser tail plane, whatever you want to call it, separate rudder. Again, keeping up with the same level of finesse on the detail, all crisply moulded, looking good. And Quick flip over, no no ejects pin issues there. You know, sometimes you can get some proud or raised ejector pins. I've noticed them most in things like AF V Club kits. And they can cause problems if they're way too long. You're trying to put a tank together and you can't actually get it together because the ejector pin stubs are about half an inch long sometimes. Anyway, next sprue we come to is Lots and lots of fiddly parts, all dinky dinky little things. I think the majority of these are fins for the armament. So if we move down here, I think these are all going to be the uh, fins for the missiles or rockets or bombs. Uh, exhaust rings for them. But you know, lots of nice small parts to stick together. The hangers as well for the weapons. As, as again, all nice and crisp, clean, no muss, no fuss, no messing about. And then we come to the sprue with the uh, centerline tanks. I'm not sure whether they're drop tanks or not on this. And three types by the looks of it. Whether they're different sizes or different nationalities use different tanks, I don't know. We have more of the cockpit insert. Well, these are definitely the cockpit side walls, side consoles. Other little parts. Not entirely sure what they are, but we'll find out when we build it. So again, we've got more options for different versions. So I'm guessing with something like MiG-21 there are several different versions, there's the SMT, the R, and MFT and all sorts of others. So some of the sprues are probably the same for each kit, you just use different parts depending on the version you're building. And down here we have the instrument panel, two of them, one completely smooth, and one with all the... Uh, raised and recessed detail on it which looks very nice and so if we didn't have the photo etch it would be nice to paint that up that would come up quite well I think and back to the drop tanks or the tanks you can see we've got the same level of detail as we have on the rest of the fuselage and I think that might actually be the one that goes with the one on building because it has a shark mouth on it yeah, shark mouth is good. Anything with a shark mouth is better than something without. And 
then we have two identical sprues which contain the majority of the armaments. So if I pull it back down here, have part of what is I'm guessing a tank rather than a honking great bomb. Some pi or rock missile, sorry, some pylons, some missiles, the various different types, bombs, more drop tanks. Uh, are they rocket pods? Uh, something like, might just be. Are uh, they going to be bombs? I'm not entirely sure what that is. <laughs> and over this side we have the other halves of the bigger things and uh, more armaments. The next sprue is exactly the same sprue, so we don't need to look at it. And as again as with the rest of the kit similar levels of no same levels of detail even on the well some of the missiles aren't quite as daintily detailed there's some nice raised detail on the drop tanks though oh clunk bang next one to the clear parts which as Edward usually do in a uh, Ziploc bag. Let's keep them safe. And as Edward normally do, very very nice clear parts. We've got at least at least two or three different versions of canopy here. And two different versions of clear instrument panel. I'm guessing would be if you had a version that had an acetate sheet that went behind it. So you'd have the acetate sheet, the instrument panel, and then either painted that painted or the photo etch on top of that to give depth and make sure make the uh, lenses all appear glossy. But there's no centre seams, nothing looks scuffed or damaged or broken. Good clarity. As usual, you're going to get a little bit of distortion just because it's a curved surface and it's not you know, an optical lens. It's, it's a piece of mass produced injection moulded plastic. So, for it to be as clear as it is, is actually a pretty good thing. This is something we, as modelers, we sometimes forget about is that the kits we build are mass produced injection molded oh no we don't want that yet I don't want the decals yet we also get a set of masks for oh, what's on there canopy wheels and some of the various markings as well now we get the small bag of the nice parts Again, which this one isn't too much of an issue, but we've got two frets of etch. First one, just some little details on, I think wing fences. And probably just you know, little detail up parts, probably for the uh, landing gear. As well, I say that as there's two in there mirrored, it kind of makes sense to me. Pick that up, pop it back in. And then the bit that some people either love or hate, which is the Edward pre-painted, or pre-printed, sorry, etch. For which we get all the cockpit sidewalls, the different uh, instrument panels, centre console as it were, the seat belts, pulls for the ejector seat and a few other little pieces. i say virtually all that is inside the cockpit. So it either saves you a lot of work or it takes away a job that you enjoy doing. In my case, as for this buddy build, well, not just my case, um, for probably most people, as this buddy build is only over a month, so February, so 28 days to build and paint a 148th plane, having Sticking etch is probably a good idea. 
Then we come to the decals and stencil sheets, which will, as with most Russian aircraft, be fairly extensive. We shall start with the decals because they're the shiny nice bits. Put them the right way up. And cartograph, so say no more. And you can see we have all the various different marking options. The decals for the interior of the cockpit, they're actually really nice. Um, if you're doing the weekend edition, you wouldn't be upset using those decals, not at all. Again, as we always say with cartograph, very little carrier film, everything's in register, the colours are crisp and clear and not that I can actually read Russian, but the tiny little stencils are actually words rather than just squiggly lines. So all in all, a good sheet of decals, 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 water slide transfers, just don't call them stickers. We'll keep these safe, we'll pop them back into the bag. The last thing I want is to uh, spill some water or something on them and ruin the decals. And then we come to the second sheet, which is just all the stencil data. And quite a lot of these would probably be for the weapons. Um, but same as the previous sheet, except these are just made by Edward rather than Cartograph. Um, but yeah, equally nice decals, should go down without a problem. There's a little more carrier film on them, but it's just given <laughs> how small they are, you probably need a little more just to hold them in one piece. But again, having built one of these, I know they'll go down well. If they don't, I've probably got a spare set somewhere. Yeah. It's not like I don't have spare Russian decals or stencils and they just got to be roughly uh, right roughly right rather than exact right let's just zoom me back out again oh, straighten the camera up a little as it's going a bit saggy on its mount and on to the destructions typical Edward glossy black and white and as we can see from sprue map the sheer amount of parts that aren't used because there are different versions of the plane you know, sprue f basically we're not using any of it same with the clear parts we're only using a few parts of that and sprue e but there we go so we start out not actually with the cockpit we start with the front wheel well going together then the cockpit builds up onto that the instrument panel we can either use this you know I use the PE there are two different colors but depending on the option you're using um, or you can use the decal depends which you prefer rest of the cockpit going in or parts of it and the engine being put together The centre gear bay, the cockpit sidewalls going in, again more PE or decal options, sticking those weight in but it doesn't say how much so I'll probably just uh, fill the shot cone up with plasticine or something like that, should be enough, they're not exactly big heavy planes. And all the bits going in, the fuselage going together. Tail, spine going on, a couple of little bits. On to the lower wing assembly. So we've got the option of air brakes open or closed. And the gear bay goes in with that and horizontal stabilizers. Then the upper wings go on. And all the control surfaces, the air brakes, little finny bits. More little finny bits 
and I'll say the rest of the air brakey parts. The landing gear goes on. Yes, those parts were for the landing gear, the PE. Pretty simple landing gear on these earlier MIGs. The later ones can get a bit complex. There's not a huge amount to them. Then front combing going in. Multi-part eject seat being put together with right wedge belts and other details. Then what do we have? Eject seat going in, canopy going on, more bits of PE going on. And we're on to putting the external fuel tanks together and the weaponry. And which loadout you're having, which not a huge amount of choice because there's not a huge amount to them. And uh, there's a little pod that only goes on the A version, which I'm not building. Showing you where all the masks go, stencil variants for the different pods. Stencil variants for the pylons and the weapons, and we're on to the colour schemes, in which we have a Soviet Air Force from 1981 in Afghanistan in Kabul. Nice, um, you know, one, two, three, four tone camo on that. Had to actually count the colours. <laughs> Would be an interesting one to paint. The Bare metal Yugoslavian one. Um, yeah, um, that's 1971. Czech Air Force Air Test Department from Kaslav. 1994. So these things were around for quite a while. Um, again, that's, I say it's quite a nice scheme. And the one I'll probably most likely be doing is the Polish Air Force from, yeah, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that, <laughs> early 80s. Uh, maybe uh, Sotichu Bealy, so I don't know, something like that. My Polish is about as good as my Klingon or Elvish. Again, another bare metal scheme but with the little shark mouth on the pod underneath which is cool and the Cuban Air Force version in the light blue and green which is also really quite cool and that's from the 90s so you can see these planes went from the 70s to the 90s and it's quite a long operational life really for the time especially and the general stencil data for the rest of the plane, as you can see, it's absolutely smothered in them. So, there we go. That covers my review of Edward's Profi Pack 148th oh, get box semi straight at least MiG 21R, uh, which I will be building. As I say, for the ISM buddy, ISM and Andreas's buddy build throughout February. So if you keep an eye on the ISM Facebook page and what have you, you'll see progress pics go up of it and see how we go. But we're draining and waffling on for plenty long enough now. So if you liked what you've seen, heard, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't, give us a thumbs down. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I try to put two videos up a week. One will be a build series review, a video and the other one will be something else like a review or a how I do or something random. Maybe even just a rant on occasion. So yeah, enjoy your modelling. Have fun. Peace out. Rock on. Bye bye.